Okie dokie, pulling up to the fuel island again. It's a Thursday, it's been six days since I refilled this tank. Average econ has unchanged. However, I have seen that tick up to uh, like 14.8. Uh, but then uh, a little bit of traffic driving, a little bit of going fast, brought it back down to 14. So my driving style plus the weight of this truck, I end up with 14. So uh, a little bit higher up, I, I was running 13.8, 13.9. Uh, like I said in the last video about this uh, Oxytane fuel cleaner slash additive that uh, it's not supposed to increase economy but what it has done was cause a smoother engine with a smoother power band and I've also seen a visible reduction in tailpipe emissions meaning less smoke during uh, like wide open throttle shifts for example uh, anyway what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and refill this tank and I am not going to treat this tank. And we're gonna see if I can notice a subjective decline in performance after running a tank or two of uh, non-treated regular fuel yet again. And we're looking like, what do we got today? 542 is what I'm gonna pay for fuel today. And that's for the lime flavored. They've also got cherry flavored over there, but all the islands are full. So I'm just gonna get the lime today. Powering down. Now, for the record, I have not touched any of the fuel that's in the auxiliary tank. I'm just kind of leaving that in there. That's my backup supply in case we have a hurricane or something like that. All right, let's see here. Don't look at my card, guys. Here, you look over there. I mean, most of you are probably cool, but I guarantee you there's one person that just can't be trusted. Processing, remove. In fueling now. Pump. Be safe. Please don't text and drive. Hey, five bucks. Got a gallon. No choices. That's brutal. We got a hundred bucks for eighteen gallons. Test your smoke detectors monthly. Let's see, what did 100 bucks get us? Hey, three quarters, okay. Yeah, we're at 117 now, it's 22 gallons. Yeah, we got a little bit more to go. So, while we're waiting, and I got a minute, I'd like to send a shout out to Pierce in Duluth, Georgia because he sent me this, uh, this emblem here, key to the city, so to speak. It's dated 1902. I, I think it was affixed to something. No, nah, maybe not. It's engraved on this side too, but this thing is super cool. So thank you. I appreciate this very much, sir. Awesomeness. I, I got a whole bunch of other stuff in the mail. I didn't open that stuff yet. This was the small package, um, but preemptively everybody else who has sent me something uh, in recent times and in past times, um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all right now. So that being said, uh, my fuel is done. Uh, looks like we got 28 and a half gallons for $154.92 this time. It's a lot of, a lot of dollars for not a lot of gallons. This displeases me. Yeah, we're done. Twitter immediately fired Cap clicks. Okay. Okay, restarting mobile climate control. Full speed. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do a reset on the Econ. I'm gonna do a reset on my trip meter, if I can find it. Here, I'll just all reset both of those. Oh, you know what, just for the heck of it, 2007 Chevrolet Silver Rado 3500 6.6 .6 liter Dirty Max 210,240 miles on the clock Customer states Window is taped up And window fell down on the highway Check and advise There, now that we got that formality out of the way We'll reset that meter That one's been reset and I think that's all we can do. So I'm just gonna let these things do their count. 
while we uh, continue our experiment of going out and about. Uh, again, this is the tank of untreated fuel now, and I wanna see if I can notice any kind of decrease in performance. Having used two, K, having used two tanks of Oxytane treated fuel, and now switching back to my first tank of non-Oxytane treated fuel. Uh oh, the rain has started. It's a good thing that my tape is blue so that we know it's good. So I was thinking, and based on my thoughts, my way of thinking is this. If this product is some kind of fuel enhancer, then I should see an immediate decrease in my perceived performance of, uh, of the engine. Because if, in fact, it is some type of enhancer, then the absence of said enhancer would revert the system back to uh, a reduced level of performance. If it's a cleaning agent, then I should not see an immediate reduction in performance in the absence of the product in the current tank of fuel. So I think that is what I'm gonna be on the lookout for on this next, uh, next tank of fuel that we're gonna go through. I think I wanna find out do, do I feel or do I perceive a reduced level of performance without the treated fuel? So that will be our new objective. Right, sunshiny day. I can't even see the road. Awesome. The Florida car wash. Three ninety nine. I like hanging out behind the trucks in rain like this because they tell me where all the puddles of water are. They're gonna splash through them before I have to. Yeah, this is pretty gnarly. Yeah, that's right. I said gnarly. I lived in Hawaii once kind of stuck. So anyway, all this rain's got a bonus to it, I suppose. It really slowed everybody down, and uh, I've achieved uh, better than my average fuel economy so far. It has nothing to do with the treatment or the absence of the treatment. I'm just driving a lot slower. You know, which brings me to a thought. Uh, I do believe that the holy grail of fuel economy uh, rests at the end of your right leg right down there on that pedal. Yeah, there's no amount of tune-ups or special tires or wheel alignments or aerodynamics. I mean, all that stuff can have an effect, but the largest influence imaginable on your fuel economy is going to be your right foot. That's especially true in a situation where you know you're going to be slowing down or stopping. A lot of folks, they'll just stay on the gas right until the point where they need to brake to stop where they want to stop. But the reality is, if you just let off the throttle and coast just a little bit, you will drastically improve your vehicle's fuel economy. Because every single time you touch your brake pedal, you are converting kinetic energy into heat energy, and that is wasted energy. Now, that kinetic energy came from the engine and the vehicle's powertrain, and it was extracted from the chemical energy stored inside of the fuel source. Does that make any sense? So you've got your fuel source that contains all the energy. Your engine is the machine that removes that energy. It converts the chemical into mechanical energy. And then the rest of the drivetrain converts certain types of mechanical energy into other types of mechanical energy. And that's what gets your motion going. That's what makes you move. But then when you brake, you are dumping all of that energy that you've used and built up and now you have stored in the form of kinetic energy. You are dumping all of that and transferring it into heat, thus slowing you down. Now I'm not saying don't use your brakes because your brakes are good and you really should use them. But if you can avoid braking simply by coasting, you will not be harvesting, using, and wasting as much energy as you would if you were doing like the lead foot stop and go traffic kind of thing. And that affects everybody. Hybrid electrics, giant diesel trucks, semi trucks, freight trains, even aircraft use that approach. Now let's try and do some puddles. Yeah. Uh, it's an under 
car pressure washer moment. There's some more of them up here, really good ones. Let's go a little faster. Ah, uh, that one was weak. See, I'm coasting. Now, real quick, forewarning, you know, it's raining this afternoon. I'm taking it nice and easy. We're getting good fuel economy. Uh, tomorrow morning, on my way to work, I am going to absolutely destroy that number. It's just the way that it is. I drive fast. But it's okay, it's morning commute. That's, that's just what we do, it's a, it's a societal thing. So my blue tape is still hanging in there pretty good. I knew it was good tape because it's blue. It's just like that. The rain stop and the sun come out. Oh, never mind. Error. So check it out. I think I've got the best house in the entire neighborhood. Because I live right there on that corner. Which means if the zombies ever come, I've got line of sight all the way down the road. Pretty good setup. Same thing goes for that direction. Excellent zombie protection. Oh, by the way, I never updated you guys. I got that, that silly gate working again. It is now like, it's now functional. There it goes. Yes. All right, so it's like raining pretty bad. And my issue is I don't want to, uh, I don't want to get out in the rain. So I'm going to park with my driver's door facing my house front door. Which means I got to turn around without driving in the pond. Ponds are mandatory here in case there's like a fire. The fire department has a source of water. Plus the way it works is they dig the pond and that's where the dirt pile comes from to put the house on top of. Clever system. I wish we could have basements though. There we go, that's what we're talking about. No rain exposure for me. I know I'm totally being a big baby for no reason. Anyway, we're back, we're parked. We achieved 15.5 miles per gallon on this particular trip. Um, like I said earlier, that's gonna go away very quickly tomorrow. Uh, but well, you know, we'll see where it lands. I'll check back in with you guys later. Powering down. Beep.